All right, this is the first step in uh, implementing the crawler for the SAP Intersource portal. Uh, so we've got the uh, SAP has developed this front end. Um, that's a basic HTML front end for the uh, for an Intersource uh, portal, um, and it essentially looks like um, this. And uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go and we're going to implement what they call a crawler. And so this front end is static and it pulls data from this repos.json file. Uh, now we're going to essentially implement the thing that, uh, you know, puts the data in the repos.json file. And they got a little diagram here of how that works. And now ours is going to be a slightly modified version of these two um, using data flows and operations and uh, also sources. So what we're going to do is... Uh, you know, we 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 need to put information in this repos.json file. Uh, our uh, input data is essentially a uh, it's this uh, tree structure. Um, so the uh, it looks like it looks like uh, it's a it's a directory, and within that directory uh, we have um, within that directory we have subdirectories which are org names of github orgs and within those directories we have repos.yaml files um, and in those repos.yaml files uh, we have the name of each repo that we care about tracking um, and we have the uh, owners of that and we could we could have arbitrary other information in there as well um, so let's go uh, there this is what it looks like here uh, so, for example, we're tracking Intel. Uh, here's the repos.json on Intel, and then we're tracking TPM2 software, and here's some repos.json uh, there. Um, so, let's see if we can. We'll grab one of these so you can see what they see, look like right now. Um, so, for example, right. So here's DF of Mel, right, and and I'm the owner, and then there's CVE Ben Tool, and Terry's the owner. Um, obviously, we've just picked picked one person here to simplify things but uh, you get the picture so that's our input data um, and we're going to be pulling repos from there um, and we want to take each one of these repos and we want to uh, generate a uh, you know we want to generate an entry in the sap repos.json um, which is looks like this and you can see basically it's id uh, and just some info from the GitHub repo. And, and this is basically what they've got here by default is if you read that crawlers document, it's just what happens if you hit the GitHub API for search for repos. Um, and so this, this is the basic information that they're asking for and they will display in the portal. Um, so we're going to essentially, and then they have this, you know, uh, they have this section inner source metadata here, um, which is where they add extra information. And so we're going to add some extra information there. Um, we're also going to have, you know, this information here populated, the standard stuff. Um, and we're going to do that by, um, so we've got our input, which is these repos YAML files, and we've got our output, which is this repos.json file. And so each, each uh, repo is maps to like the DFML concept of a record, um, and which is a you know anything that's a uniquely identifiable. So with GitHub repos, you got the owner and the repo name, and that's essentially you know that's your unique. You can uniquely identify any repo based on use, using those two things, um, or you know for example like the URL here, right? So the GitHub and the Soul Earth, because uh, they're doing a demo with planets here. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement a DFML source uh, for our inputs that are this org tree with the repo YAML files, and we're going to implement a DFML source for the outputs, which is this repos.json file. Uh, and that's what we're going to go through here right now in this demo video, and then there's going to be another demo video of how we do the data flows and stuff. So the first step is really just you know read the read the repos in that we care about, and then write them out. Um, and so what we do first is we implement the source to read the repos in, in our input format, which is that directory in YAML files. Uh, and we also implement the uh, source to read the uh, repos or to write the repos.json file. And we're actually going to implement, you'll see we implement the, uh, the repos.json uh, reader writer 
first, um, and then we're going to imp implement the one for the for the uh, directory structure with the YAML files. Uh, and then in the following video, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to uh, run the data flow. So we're going to create a data flow using operations, and those operations will collect the pieces of data that we want to have in, in the output repos.json, which we want to display on, on our inner source portal. Um, and we're going to we're going to so we're going to write little operations that are going to collect maybe each piece of data for example we might have an operation that grabs a description we might have an operation that calculates the participation um or grabs the logo um and for example one of the operations we're going to do is based on the um owner we're going to generate the gravatar url um, so we can display the gravatar url um uh, if you're not familiar with gravatar it's uh go check it out. Basically, you can add your picture and then everywhere on the internet can use your email to give your profile picture for the whole internet, essentially. So, um, okay, so yeah, we'll implement those operations and we'll show how using a data flow, um, we can leverage uh, different data that's generated by different operations so that not every operation has to do everything. For example, if we generate, if we grab a GitHub API request um, that gets this data, like I said, this is, you know, the data you get on just uh, from doing a regular GitHub search, right? We might, we might return a repository object that has the minimum this data. And then instead of each operation you know each other operation that might generate some metrics or some data that would go you know in this inner source metadata that's the additional stuff uh having to make the rev uh, a, a request to the github api itself um, we can leverage the object um, that we return from the first operation and uh, now we can write more operations that you know maybe calculate things or for example generate things based off the owner email address we can generate the the gravatar url um, and we don't have to you know make more web requests we can just pass around the same objects um, and so this means that the authors of these operations uh, don't necessarily have to know how to use the github api they may just know that hey there's this object floating around that somebody else has already used the api to get um, and that way we can create these you know large tree uh, directed, you know, it's a large directed graph of, of how the data, um, how you, you write operations, they produce data, and you can leverage the data produced within other operations, you know, without having to re -go grab that data. Um, all right, so let's get to it. We're going to write these two sources, starting with the uh, repos.json source, which is the output source. Um, and we're just going to implement reading and writing because it's it's very easy for a JSON source. And then then I'll show you when we uh, we implement the one to read the repo YAML files organized under a specific directory tree. All right, so um, let's get to it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play you an ASCII cast of uh, of how I how I did this. So and uh, I know this is 4K, but uh, so you may have to zoom in. All right, so. Okay, this is gonna be too fast, isn't it? All right. Um, all right. So what I did here is I started from the JSON source itself, um, and the JSON source is it's it's an existing source that that has a, that stores things in a JSON object. Now the SAP format is actually a, a, an array. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna subclass from we're we're gonna we're not gonna actually subclass from the JSON source. We're gonna subclass from the same things that the JSON source subclasses from, which is the file source and the memory source. Um, and we're going to uh, with the memory source essentially provides us with a dictionary that that backs all our objects that we've loaded into memory um, in this dictionary, which is self mem. Um, and so we really just need to, uh, and, and the file source uh, provides us with the, on open, it, it provides us with the file descriptor and on save, we call this dump FD. And so all we have to do is implement those methods from load to the file descriptor and dump from the file descriptor. So we're just going to load the repo data. You make the unique key that the HTML or the, the HTML URL, which is the same as the repo URL. And we're going to create a rep record object for each one of those where the feature data is that um, example, you know, data, data JSON object up there. Um, and then when we dump it out, we just dump the uh, dictionary that we have in memory to a list. Um, and, you know, with, then, then when we load it back in, right, we load it into the dictionary keyed off the, off the URL. Um, and so we're going to register this thing as an entry point. Uh, we're not going to cover that 
quite yet. Um, and that is essentially going to allow us to do a shorthand version of this call right here. Um, so right now, what we're going to do is we're going to write the long version where we specify the full path um, to the class, which we want to use to list the sources. Um, and so you can see sources, SAP Porter, Repo, JSON, and then the, uh, the class name there. Um, and then we provide the arguments, which are the same as the file sources uh, config arguments, which is essentially, you know, that's the file name um, to load from. And, and that's just going to be our JSON file that we give. So, uh, and here you can see, I uh, got confused because I had these uh, relative imports that I didn't delete. So now we deleted them and now we can go and we can run the, uh, we can run the, run the source here to run that command line example. Um, and we see that we dump the data. Um, so let's see, I was going to create an issue and then I didn't. All right. So here's, here's the dump, right? You do, you run this list command um, and running the list command instantiates this class. Um, we're using this file name as, as the, uh, as the, um, uh, you know, the file name to read the JSON from and, and, and does lists all the records in it, um, which we populated via populating that self.mem object. So now we just copied uh, the previous file to the new file, um, you know, to use as a template. And we're going to go through and implement this for the orgs. Um, so this is, like I said, the directory structure, which I just showed earlier. Uh, it's got orgs and then it's got each subdirectory is the org name. And here's the contents of those files. It's got the name and the owners, uh, which is a list. Um, so we go through and uh, we're just going to list, you know, we're going to do a recursive listing of all the YAML files. Um, our config object is just going to take the directory, which is the top level orgs directory. Um, and so then every YAML file we find, the org name is going to be the, um, the org name is going to be the, um, um, the org name is going to be the subdirectory name. And then the, uh, you know, we load all the YAML documents and you can see the YAML documents are separated by the three three dashes there. So we load all the YAML documents in each repos.yaml file um, and we'll, you know, key the URLs, uh, which I think I forgot to do. So I'll do that right here at the end. Um, we'll key we'll, we'll key the records based on, you know, org name slash uh, repo name, right? Um, and so here what we do is we can just implement the, the memory source. Um, we're not going to use the file source because obviously we're, we're reading from a directory, not a file. So what we do is those load that load FD method, it actually gets called on the a enter method, which is a context entry to this, uh, this source object. And you can read about that on the double context entry page. Um, so everything follows this double context entry pattern. And, and for, uh, the memory source here, you, you, you can, uh, the, the, the context is handled for you. So you only have to do the top level context. Um, so, uh, and I'll, I'm going to open this up in a second here. So, because now it's going too fast. So, all right. Um, so, uh, let me bring this up for us. Sources. Okay. So, uh, on entry. So when this class is instantiated, it, per the double context entry documentation, you know, we're going to do this double context entry pattern. And this is the first context entry is what you're seeing here in this a enter method. So when we instantiate this class and the first thing we do before we use it at all is we hit this a enter method. Um, and so now we can use this as an opportunity to populate the self dot mem that we were populating before. Um, and so uh, in, in the previous example and, and in all the other sources, if you go, go through them, if they're based on memory source, um, so you can, yeah, you can, you can, you can populate that self.mem here and, and you can see what we're doing is just, you know, recursively listing all the YAML files, uh, grabbing them and then setting the name. And so we have to, I, like I said, I screwed up here. So, uh, and I forgot that we want to, um, you know, make the full, full URL, the name. So we're going to do github.com and then slash the org name, which is the uh, YAML path dot parent dot name uh, parent because it's the parent directory. So the subdirectory of whatever the configured directory is, which is orgs parent dot name uh, slash doc. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, slash doc dot name. Okay. Oops. All right. Yeah. Great. Um, and, you know, let's just. So this is the records key 
uh, which is the unique identifier that I was talking about. Um, so as long as we have a unique identifier, then uh, we can, you know, we can use the source construct. Um, so now we've got, you know, the key, which is the uh, github.com slash org name slash um, repo name. Uh, and you can see, we'll, we'll rerun this example here and, and it, it'll show up like this. So where's my, there we go. So we'll rerun this example command. Oops. Oh, and I am not in that directory. All right, so now we see that the key is, is the correct uh, set of values here, which is the, you know, the full GitHub URL. Um, all right. So, uh, and now what this is going to do is, right, so what we can do now is, is, is we'll go and we'll make our data flows and we'll make it so that, you know, just like the list command, all, you know, all the, all the command syntax is, is very similar here. So, so uh, we're going to do a data flow run command and we're going to use this orgs thing as, as our, our input source. And then we're going to run the data flow on each one of these and we're going to produce a record that's going to be uh, output to the um, to the other source that we wrote, which is that records.json source. So that's what we're going to cover in the next video. All right, thanks.